Okay, we're going to have a quick look at a few ways in which meiosis can go wrong. And the first way we're going to look at is aneuploidy, which is where we have um, a, a, the wrong number of a particular chromosome, and that's from non-disjunction or non-separation of the chromosomes during meiosis. The next way is polyploidy, uh, which is where we have the wrong number of the whole set of chromosomes. Okay, so first off, Okay, this is basically showing uh, 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 two divisions of meiosis, this being our first reduction division and this being our, our second division of meiosis, that mitotic division. Um, in, in When meiosis is working properly, uh, what we have is we have um, a homologous pair of chromosomes here. We have one of those pair uh, go to one of the daughter cells and one of those pair go to the other daughter cells. Um, what we can see in the second stage of meiosis is um, basically separating into our, our four separate chromosomes. So what we end up with is um, four gametes which are all haploid, having a, a one, one version of the, the two original chromosomes. Now let's have a look at um, what happens um, if non-disjunction occurs in meiosis 1. And by that, we mean that the chromosomes don't separate into the two daughter cells properly. So if both of them were to go to this side, and we had none of them to go to this side here, uh, so what this means is that our resulting gametes will have two versions of the chromosome, and the other two gametes over here will have no um, versions of that particular chromosome. Um, the versions of the chromosomes here, they have one of each. Okay, so one from each of these. And it's this odd number of uh, chromosomes in the, in the gametes that causes um, the, the problems later on. Now let's have a look at another way that non-disjunction can occur. It can also occur in meiosis 2. So if this was to happen, what would the, during meiosis 1, the homologous pair of chromosomes would each go have one go to each of the daughter cells as, as normal. Um, but and, and, and one of the cells might actually just go through the normal process, resulting in each of the gametes having one version of, of the chromosome. But what could happen in the other one is if, if non-separation occurs, that we could have this whole um, replicated chromosome going to one particular cell and nothing to the other. So essentially what we're going to end up with is a cell with two versions of the, the gamete rather than just the one and a cell with no versions. Now let's just have a look at what would happen if one of these um, gametes was involved in, in reproduction. Um, presuming we had um, a, a sperm and an egg cell here, the sperm cell just has one version of that particular chromosome. The egg cell, however, has two versions because of that non-disjunction. So that means that resulting zygote for that chromosome might have three versions. All the other chromosomes might have replicated normally and um, all, all, you might have 23 pairs of chromosomes, 22 pairs might come out normally, um, but in that zygote for that one chromosome you have three pairs. Um, and this is a situation we have in Down syndrome on, on chromosome number 21. Um, and when people have an extra chromosome there, they have Down syndrome. Now this individual, uh, or this, this cell down here, um, that has three versions of a particular chromosome is called trisomy. And we can also, I suppose, imagine um, what might happen um, if instead of um, the egg cell here having two versions of the chromosome, if it had none, um, the resulting zygote, uh, instead of having um, its normal two versions, it might just have one version. Um, and, and they can cause a whole lot of gen genetic diseases as well. Okay, let's have a look now at polyploidy. And polyploidy is when we have complete sets of the chromosomes. So, um, we're not just talking about the number 21 or the number 13 chromosome, we're talking about the whole set. And if we remember normally um, that each gamete is 1N uh, and the resulting zygote is 2N. Now if there, there's been some problem with uh, meiosis, um, and presume here we, we have a, a, a sperm cell that is 2N, 
and an egg cell, as normal, is one end. Um, that sperm cell ha has two sets of every single chromosome. If that was to make a zygote with an egg cell, the resulting zygote would be three n. Now that's that's got a whole lot of chromosomes, and the, the messages really just get a bit a bit too confused. And um, in, in most animal cells, um, those zygotes just really won't survive and function. However, in plant cells, um, they are they are able to to survive and reproduce. Not all the time, but occasionally. Um, and, and usually um, they can't really survive too well sec with sexual reproduction, but they can have asexual and vegetative um, reproduction and continu continue to survive for a little while there. And that's called polyploidy. And um, triploidy is where we have three versions. Okay, good luck with uh, looking at all these interesting things to do with meiosis.